kingdom come. Can you say that with me? Your kingdom come. So take out your notebook, your pen, your pencil, whatever. But I want you to take notes because we are going to learn some Bible tonight or today rather. Um, our earth needs heaven. Would you agree with me? Even if you don't. Our earth really does need heaven. Heaven is real, and it's as relevant to people now as ever. In fact, we might say that it's actually more relevant, this theme of heaven. We are all searching for answers, for help, relief from this, from somewhere or from someone. And perhaps we're looking harder today. We're searching harder today than ever before for every any other time for God to come to our rescue, to answer to reach down and help us in this time of crisis. Lord, come. Your kingdom come is the cry of our heart. This message is not a new message. It was actually the message that Jesus himself brought. It was his message. It was the banner that he held up as he spoke to the people of his time. And Jesus commissioned his early apostles to teach. And this what he commissioned them to teach was called the good news or the gospel. Also this gospel known as the kingdom of God. Say it with me, the kingdom of God. Jesus equated gaining salvation with entering the kingdom of God. And he explained that the loss of salvation is the rejection of the kingdom of God. Matthew 13, 19 actually says, when everyone with, when anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches it away. That was sown in their hearts. We see that the message of salvation is called the word of the kingdom. Mark 10, 15 says, truly I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. So we need to receive this kingdom of God, this word of the kingdom. Our hope and comfort as Christians is entering the kingdom. Our principal goal as a Christian is to seek first the kingdom of God. And we are reassured that when we seek first the kingdom of God, that everything else will come, will be added onto us. God's original intention, church, was to establish and to extend the kingdom of heaven here on earth when he made um, Eden, when he created Adam and Eve. But when Adam and Eve sinned, they did not lose a religion. They did not lose that, uh, that religion. Rather, what they lost was the dominion over the earth. Jesus came to restore the kingdom of heaven on earth. That kingdom that Adam had lost. Unlike the religious Pharisees and Sadducees, Jesus wanted everyone to be included in this kingdom of heaven. And that's why he was saying, it is near. So he was preaching this kingdom and he wanted everyone to hear it, everyone to accept it, everyone to be included. If at any time the earth needs heaven, it is now more than ever. Wouldn't you agree with me? We need the kingdom of God now more than ever. The earth is filled with insecurity, with fear and doubt and lack of control and panic. Most of society does not know what to do. They're just lost. They're anxious. They're asking questions. They don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. They don't know what they're going to eat tomorrow. There's a lot of uncertainty. There's a lot of doubt. Not even the World Health Organization knows what happened or how it happened or can actually give us a precise answer to where this whole virus started. And even our President Donald Trump in a phone conference with pastors around the country, asked for our prayers. He asked, he reached out and said, will you pray for me because I don't know exactly how to open back up the market, how, when it's a good time. Governments around the world are confused. They do not know what to do. It's like everyone is waiting to see what the United States is doing and the mess ups or, or the triumphs that we have and then they're going to follow whatever we do. 
Each state is waiting on another state, depending on what each one is doing. The people who are supposed to give us answers are bankrupt for solutions. You heard me right. The people that we look up to that are in those positions uh, of control or of power, our government officials are, are searching out. They're bankrupt for solutions. So we sit waiting for something to happen every day, something to improve, something new to be discovered. The government of our country is injecting, injecting billions of dollars into small businesses, if not trillions now, sending money to every citizen of this country, looking for ways to offer help, feeding thousands of families every single day all over the world. All of this, hoping that this strategy will work so as not to completely kill the economy of the United States. I think one of the biggest mistakes we make is looking for earthly solutions to earthly problems, only to find that they're not enough. We're trying to do so much, and I'm not, I'm not saying we shouldn't do it. It's just that we're looking for the solution to, to, we're looking for earthly solutions to these earthly problems. That is why I conclude this introduction to this message by saying that we really do need help from another world. You're going to like, pastor's just gone crazy. What is she talking about? We really do need help from another world. Wouldn't you agree that our world needs help? Yes, we do. Just look at the person that's sitting next to you and say, we need help. <laughs> or let me put it this way. Our world needs heaven. Our world needs heaven. We need God, not only within the four walls of our churches, and most definitely not as another religion, but we need him in our schools. We need prayer back in our schools. We need him in our jobs, in our businesses. We need him in the hospitals, in our medical system, in every police department, in our economy, in every single marriage, in every home, on every street of every city. We need him. We need more heaven here on earth. I know I need a mega dose of his supernatural wisdom. How many can say amen to that? I know that I do need a mega dose of his supernatural wisdom. Now, I have to admit that I love superheroes. I don't know if you love them, but I love superheroes. And I've found that most people do. There's just something about a superhero. I, I'm kind of a traditional, or, or I'm kind of traditional on my faves, being that I would hands down always choose Superman and Wonder Woman over all other superheroes. No matter which new one comes out, I just go back. I'm just traditional on that, on Superman and Wonder Woman. Now, why is it that most of us, although we are adults, we still like superheroes? knowing that they are not real and knowing that the story is not true. I believe it's because we are marveled by a superhero, like Superman and Wonder Woman that come from another planet to use their superpowers to come and save us from our enemy. Wouldn't you agree that the earth needs a Superman? All the single ladies in the house are like, amen, glory to God, right? <laughs> Preach it, pastor, I'm hearing you. A superhero, we all need a superhero who comes down from another place, from another world, from another planet, or from another place with his superpowers and helps us right about now. Wouldn't you agree that we need saving? We need someone from another world with a different mentality ideas and thoughts to teach us how. We don't need more of us. We don't need more human. We don't need more selfishness. We don't need more greed. We don't need more lies. We need someone with a different mentality to teach us how. How to live, how to love purely, how to forgive completely how to bless and not withhold, how to help, how to enjoy, how to laugh, how to not live under stress. We can call on our Superman, 
the Superman Jesus, 100% God, but 100% man, which teaches us the way of heaven. That was his message. The kingdom of heaven is near. Teaching us not the way of man, not leaving us to follow our own heart, but rather challenging us not to conform to this world, but rather to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Matthew 6, 9 to 10 says it this way. This then is how you should pray. When he was teaching his disciples on how to have a conversation with our Father. And he says this. This is how you should pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus says that this is how we should pray. In another translation, it actually says, so then pray like this. Jesus having this conversation, he's like, pray like this. Call down heaven to earth. Your kingdom come. Your kingdom come. That should be our prayer. That is what we should say. That is how we should pray. Calling kingdom down your kingdom come why because obviously what is currently on earth and of earth is not working turn to your neighbor and say it's not working turn to your other neighbor and say it's just not working stop defending what is not working Stop defending, please, what is not working. If it's not working, it's just not working and it, and it needs to change. The definition of crazy is someone who keeps doing the same thing, expecting a different outcome. You're not going to get a different outcome if you don't change it. It's just crazy. It's just mad. It's just so earthly. We have to ask for something different because it's not working. This prayer that Jesus left us is the solution to our current situation. It is the solution. It is the way, that the, it's, it is our conversation. It is that conversation that we, it needs to be the cry of our heart, the pleading with God, your kingdom come, your will be done. The answer to the problem on earth is not on earth. It is elsewhere. It is in heaven. It is Jesus Christ in his word. We must call heaven down. Allow the culture of heaven to be established, not only on this world, but first in our hearts. Pray, number one, that the government of heaven would be established on earth. Number two, pray that the values of heaven would come down to earth. Values have to do with what each of us values. What each of us places, places worth on. It is what you look at and you see that is worth something that is valuable. We need to call for those values of heaven to come down to earth. Number three, pray that the morality of heaven is also established on earth. Come on, you guys. We are so far from that kingdom coming. We have taken prayer out of schools. We are killing babies. We are allowing no morality. It just depends. It's all gray. It is all based on feelings. It is all based on our heart when the Bible says that it is his truth. The truth of God that never passes. And that is what we need to stand firm on and grasp. What are the current moral principles on earth? Professional ethics. Ethics in business, ethics in relationship. It's just so normal now for people to be divorced. It's so normal now to live together out of wedlock. And I'm not judging. Trust me, I am not judging. I'm just having you see how far from the kingdom we are. Ethics in everything. The low level we have on ethics here on earth is so low that it has become one of the biggest problems we have. It seems like 
It's just so sad to see how on the news, newspapers and media have such low ethics and they produce and they publish and they print information and news that is actually fraudulent. You don't even know what to believe now. It was that before you could read something in the newspaper and it meant something. It was that you could hear something on a news channel and it meant something. But now it seems that most people are pushing their own agenda and their own opinions instead of actually just giving, uh, giving us the truth. Did you know that antichrist actually means anti-truth? Anti-truth? And it says that in the last days, people will, that the Antichrist will be here. That that is anti-truth, that people would believe the lie more than the truth. Wow. And we seem to have a society that holds on to this crooked, manipulated, half-truth lies. And puts them on and accepts them as truth. But it is time for the church not just C3, but every church, the church of Christ, us as one body, as his bride, the church, to move away from the thoughts of man, from the man's opinions, from man's likes and preferences and feelings, and get bold and brave. And we need to call heaven down to earth. Your kingdom come. Can you say that with me? Your kingdom come. Again, for a third time, say it with all of your heart. Your kingdom come. Yes, most of what we love is closed today, right? It's closed. Coffee shops, one of my favorites. Coffee shops. Hair salons and barber shops, restaurants. Our Monday tradition was to go to the movies, right? We go watch a movie, then go out to eat. It was just something we did. It's something that we love to do, to rest. And now all of that is closed. How about you guys with your sporting events and your favorite um, basketball or, or baseball or football or whatever you like to watch and now you're just hoping and praying that they do something right and we're missing all of that we're missing the concerts the concerts are being canceled and I'm missing church I'm missing you guys I'm missing standing next to each other and just being able to worship together but let me remind you something although all these things are closed heaven is still open and it's open for everyone Heaven has not closed. Can you say amen to that? Can you say thank you, God, for that? Heaven is still open. Did you know that in heaven there is never a crisis? That gives me the confidence that as a citizen of the kingdom, and this should reassure each and every one of us, that as a citizen of the kingdom, living in this colony known as earth, I will not experience a crisis. I can call, I can call down the kingdom of God. I can call down his peace that surpasses all understanding. I can stand firm on the truth of his word that he is in control of it all, that he is fighting for me, that he will cover me with his presence, that we are not going to go through this crisis, that this crisis, rather than being a moment of panic, would be a time of opportunity, of opportunity to prosper, an opportunity to grow, an opportunity to be stretched and, and to, 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 I don't know, to reach in a new business opportunity, to think differently, to think of creative ways to do things. Remember, we are in this world, but we are not of this world. Jesus was born in a colony. Yes, he was born in a colony. In a place which was governed by the Roman culture. So Jesus had to intentionally take care of himself so he wouldn't contaminate himself or adapt to the Roman culture. But Jesus warned them in 1 Peter 2, 11 to 12, Dear friends, I warn you as temporary residents and foreigners. We are all temporary residents and foreigners. And he warned them to keep away from worldly desires that wage war against your very souls. Jesus said that although he was in the world, he was not of this world and he wasn't going to think or act or preach or do. And he was not to be conformed to what they said or they thought. And, oh, you can't heal on a Saturday. He's like, oh, yes, I can. 
Or you can't heal. I'm sorry, on a Sunday, oh, yes, I can. I can heal on any day, on a Monday, or you can on a Tuesday, it doesn't matter. You can't speak to a woman, oh, yes, I can. You can't touch a leper, oh, yes, I can. He did everything on how the kingdom thinks, how the kingdom rules, on what the kingdom heart is, and that is God's heart. He does not do as others do because he does what pleases his father. He works and thinks very differently than the world this is not ignoring reality, but rather living above it. Living above it. And that is what I want to motivate you today. Not to be restrained by reality, but rather to live above it. To believe in that supernatural power of an almighty God. Can you say amen? Philippians 3, 18 to 21. You put amen on that chat, right, as you're watching the service. You put amen. You raise your hand. You receive that word. You take it for yourself. Philippians 3, 18 to 21 says this, for as I have often told you before now, tell you again, even with tears. Can you imagine this message being given with tears in his eyes? Many live as enemies of the cross, of the cross of Christ. Their destiny is destruction. This brings tears to the eyes of the person that is giving this verse. Their destiny is destruction. Their God is their stomach and their glory is in their shame. Their mind is set on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven. And we eagerly await a savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. Tears in Paul's eyes, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. I want to piggyback and develop this series that our pastor shared in Spanish titled The Kingdom for a couple of weeks. So we're going to spend a couple of weeks just going and developing this series of the kingdom. Because our Father who is in heaven has just left us with these supernatural keys. Jesus taught these keys of the kingdom. So that in this time, this time that everyone is calling a crisis for us as his children, this crisis can become the incubator for innovation. This crisis can become the womb for creativity, an opportunity to grow, an opportunity to prosper, an opportunity to stretch, to grow our minds, to think, to not be told what to do, but rather to think and to ask the kingdom of God to give us those heavenly ideas in this time. A crisis is the womb of creativity. If you don't believe me, just talk to an ex-convict or a college student or an ex-college student. We all find innovative ways on how to use ramen. Yes, you heard me right, top ramen. There is a recipe called Pad Thai Ramen Noodles. And many of you that have not been in jail or another jail called college, living on campus as I did, would not know this recipe, but as college students or prisoners need to find creative ways, I want to share with you a couple of these um, creative ways that convicts or college students do these recipes. So Pad Thai Ramen, one package of ramen noodles, one third cup of peanut butter, one fourth cup of crushed peanuts, and two tablespoons of hot sauce. And that is known as Pad Thai Ramen. How about prison surprise? Ramen noodles, Doritos or Cheez-Its crushed up, Jack Mac or canned tuna and hot sauce. Yes, you got that there. I hope you're not writing down these recipes. Gel house burrito ingredients. One package of spicy ramen noodles. Three-fourths of spicy jalapeno ranch flavored popcorn. One-fourth cup of squeezable cheese. Any hot sauce set, such as sriracha, Tabasco, one half back of Cheetos, crushed cheese, flavored crackers, spicy takis, and tortilla. And you got yourself a beautiful burrito. Tell me if crisis isn't the womb.
room for creativity. So instead of repeating what the people of this world think and feel, we are going to dive into the word of God and search to understand what the kingdom of God says, what the kingdom of God declares, how the kingdom of God works, the keys of the kingdom, the culture of the kingdom. In a few words, I'm going to take the time to teach on many valuable details of the kingdom of heaven. So you got to come back next week, okay? Don't leave me hanging here next Sunday morning. The prologue to the last book, and with this I want to conclude. The prologue to the last book of the Bible, being Revelations 1, verses 1 to 3, says this. The revelation from Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants, that must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to the servant John, who testifies to everything he saw that is the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy, and blessed are those who hear it and to take to heart what is written in it because the time is near. Now the epilogue of this book closes saying, in Revelations 22, 12 to 14 and 16 to 17. Listen to what it says. Look, I am coming soon. So the beginning says, hey, we're writing this because he's coming soon. And the, the epilogue says, look, I am coming soon. My reward is with me. And I will give to each person according to what they have done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end, and again with a blessing. Blessed are those who wash their robes, that they may have the right to the tree of life, and may go through the gates into the city. I, Jesus, this is Jesus talking, this is Jesus concluding this whole book. Jesus bringing to a close the entire Bible. He says, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give this testimony for the churches to you and I. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright morning star. Now listen to this. Listen to this. The Spirit, being the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit and the bride, the church, the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit was, was left here on earth. Just imagine, Jesus ascended into heaven and said, I leave you the Holy Spirit. You can't be sad because I'm going away. So Jesus is there at the right hand of his father. And he's just preparing a place for us, for his bride. He's just waiting for the day for his father to say, it's time. But he says, I'm leaving you the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is here with us. And we are the bride. The church is the bride. You and I, when we receive Jesus, we become part of this bride. And so the verse says the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, and the bride, the church, say. What do they say? What does the verse say? Come on, say it with me. What is it? Put it on there. Write it in the, in the comments. What does it say? Come. Come. What is the cry of the heart of the Holy Spirit here on earth? What is the cry of the bride that is here on earth? The cry of our heart, the prayer is, come. And let the one who hears, if you are listening to this message, say, what should we say? Come on, you guys. Come on, church. What should we say? Come. Let the one who is thirsty, come. And let the one who wishes take the free gift of the water of life. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Today I pray for every person in every home, in every situation. I ask you, Heavenly Father, for you to establish your kingdom, for heaven to be revealed in every home, in every checkbook, in every bank statement, in every pantry, in every refrigerator, in every car, in every single person, may your kingdom come. Every mind, every heart, every spirit, may the cry of our heart 
be. Jesus, come. Come for your bride. Let your heaven come here to earth. Make us, create in us the ability to be the answer to someone else's prayer. In Jesus' name, amen.